This is our first physical manifestation uh, in the construction process of the home. Uh, everything to this point has been on paper and in, in our minds. Uh, today, well yesterday, we completed this first step which is setting up your batter boards and your strings. Now your batter boards exist as a place to hold your witness marks. They exist as a reference to level. Um, they do not need to be square. It would have made my life a little easier if I had, you can see how off I was here. It would have made my life a little easier if they had been square. Uh, but eyeballing it did not work um, as far as where I was going to put these things. Um, I'm sure there are lots of tutorials on YouTube on how to install batter boards. I had kind of a general concept of it, which was enough. But I will say, and I'll probably put a addendum to this down in the comments, that uh, there is a there are two knots that Essential Craftsman educated me on, um, and uh, one of them is the engineer knot. I think uh, that's where you. I'll put a link to my quick version of those. But essentially, you get to tie a lark's head on one end, and uh, then you get a engineer knot. I think that's the other one on the other end. Um, and that lets you get a very tight string. That's the first thing. you got to be able to get the strings tight. Um, but uh, essentially your steps are installing batter boards that are level. Um, so this should be at the same level as this, and this end and that end should be the same level. Uh, and they are the proper height above grade for your application. In this case, uh, these are the foundation walls and the floor height above current grade. This is actually going to drop down because I'm going to, for better or for worse, I'm probably going to slope down uh, so that there's some drainage before you hit to the house. Um, but, uh, you know, in my case, this will be the level of the concrete floor and the concrete foundation walls. Um, so that's that's the first thing when you get this first one set up next to your first reference point and you just, you got to pick a point to start from. Um, and this is where the entry door is, so I, uh, that's why I chose that. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that will represent floor level. Um, and then you set up another batter board uh, set um, with, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of right off the bat. You know that's level, and you need this to be the same level as that. And you'll be amazed at how far off you are on especially if you have any undulation to your terrain and your batter boards aren't square to where you're working. Uh, this, will, this will be way off if you eyeball it. So you'll use a uh, line level such as this one that's installed on the line and that will let you uh, decide you know, whether this needs to come up or down. Um, there are all sorts of tips and tricks, I'm sure. Um, I learned a couple while I was squaring it up. But my two important things, so your batter boards need to be level, they need to be level to each other, um, they need to be sturdy enough that your dog or your kids bonking into them don't move them, because if they move, your house moves. Um, <laughs> so I'm really hoping that doesn't happen, especially since I'm doing this so slowly. Um, and they need to be... It doesn't matter if they're square, it would be helpful if they were square, like, to each other. Um, because as you move things, it's just easier. Um, but you'll notice here that this, this marker is right in the middle-ish of the board here. That's great. It's great that I managed to land this batter board in the right place. Um, because at some point I'm going to come along and I need to move this 8 inches out either side to mark the footer forms. And if I don't have 8 inches on either side, then... I don't have room to, to actually make use of the batter board for that. Um, and you also need room, in addition to that 8, in, eight inches, because your trench is going to be at least 8 inches, you need some width, because you're going to dig the trench maybe a little larger than you need to, and you need to make sure you have some width. There's some places I'm going to be close here. So um, that's, uh, that's a big deal. Uh, so on top of... Uh, um, yeah, they need to be level. You need to make sure you leave yourself some room. Um, once you get the front line of your, your place done, you know, there's nothing to square right here. This is just, is 
that mark on the string that's is is the mark on the string that's right you know at the cross of those is it right above your uh, your zero reference pin uh, and that's you know you, you use a plumb bob for that and we used the corner of this guy I know it's round it's not ideal to mark our spot and uh, you know that's our that's our zero point. And now those strings are a zero point. Uh, so from there, you know, I have to get exactly the width of the foundation wall to here. Um, so you mark that on the string, and then you set up this next string. So that's this is this is the hard part. Okay, this is easy because you need to be you know the width of the wall plus eight inches plus room to work in the trench. Uh, you know, between you need that much space right there. Um, but the problem is when you get to um, squaring it. Now, these have to be square, obviously, because you want your house square. Um, if they're not square, all sorts of, everything's bad. So obviously, square, true, and plumb, something like that. Um, you, uh, you need to square this. And the way that I did it um, the first time, I won't tell you the way I did it the first time because it was wrong. But uh, what you should do, well, what, you, what I chose to do eventually, you hang something heavy over the edge of the batter board to keep tension on the string on both ends. The reason you do that is so that you can you know, keep tension on it, but it's still easy to move. Um, then you're going to mark a spot. Um, uh, let's say, first you've got to mark the spot where your... Uh, least important string so this is my most important string because that's what I set first and I want that spot to move not this spot um, or that spot uh, so I will mark you mark on this string where it crosses this guy and then from there you need to measure and I hooked over here I measured from here to here and then I added six feet there's ignore my mess of lines and then marked a six foot line. I don't think that's actually six feet, but because I'm just this is well after the fact. Um, and then you'll do the same thing. You'll measure from there to there, and then you mark eight feet, which is say to here. And then you'll use help, which is my it was very difficult for me to get the help I needed to make sure that it is ten feet from that mark to that mark. That's a squared plus b squared plus c squared. It's trigonometry or something. Um, so you have a six foot, sorry, from here six feet, from here eight feet, and from here ten feet. And if you if you get that right, you know if this is uh, if you're measuring across here and it's too short, the tape measure won't reach. Then that needs to move this way, right? Because it needs to bring this guy in like that. Um, so you can either move. You shouldn't move this this end yet. But basically, once you get it square. Uh, I, I did a hundred different things, but once, once you get it square, it is quickest to say, okay, it's square, and you'll find that this string is not in the right, it'll be like over here, you know, or, instead, or over here, instead of right there where you want it. Um, instead of having to keep making adjustments there, just measure how far down the board you are, like, you know, if it's right here, and you measure that this is an inch, just move this an inch down, put your mark an inch down, and do the same thing over there. Um, so, right off the bat, like that would have saved me a ton of time. Get, this, get the whole thing straight, and then move it like that if you need to. Because otherwise you end up doing this thing on both ends and it's, it's no good. And then every time you move it, you have to uh, readjust You know this mark here. If I lift this end up and this string slides this way it's just a pain in the butt so um, get it square figure out how far you need to move it up or down this string and then slide it down the batter board the right distance and then check again if you need to but remember moving the string will move your mark uh, and especially if your boards aren't square which they won't be uh, you can't count on this distance being the same here as it is here <laughs> because this guy comes out um, I don't know how accurate all of this needs to be because I don't this is my first home build um, so I don't know if I'm being too anal or not anal enough but uh, 
that's a big one. Uh, all right, the other one here is that the uh, uh, these guys also recommended by Essential Craftsman, um, which I'll put a link to. Um, these square stakes make a huge difference. I mean, they're expensive, especially shipping. Um, but uh, once you get them in the ground, and you need, you know, I needed some longer ones over here, but you, once you get them in the ground, they might be a little wibbly because they're thin, but uh, they are easy to nail in these pre-drilled holes. I had a few where the holes weren't perfect. Um, and then being able to easily hammer one in this way, and I mean, it makes it, even with this one being wibbly at first, once you get two of them in, man, they're not going anywhere, and they... They just drive in so much better than wood stakes. So save yourself some trouble. If you're ever going to build anything else, get yourself a big... I, I wish I had got more because I'm going to need to get wooden stakes, stakes for the... Uh, um, what is it called? The, uh, <laughs> the footer forms. Um, so these, this was just me eyeballing where our spot was, you know, just measuring it out before I had batter boards and stakes. And you could see just uh, with a tape measure out here, I was off quite a bit from where reality puts it. Um, so this one, this was a challenge over here. These are, uh, I did not get these stakes long enough. I knew I needed some longer ones here. Um, but this moves more than I would like it to. Sorry about that. This moves more than I would like it to. Um, but, uh, it's, I feel like it's, it's going to be good enough. Um, this is, this is going to be, uh, an interesting, I wish, you know, I had different contour here and whatnot, but you can see right off the bat, the floor is pretty high up off the ground here. Um, so, uh, there's going to be a lot of fill that goes in here. Um, but, yeah, so that's the batter boards. Um, see, wish I had another stake. That's the batter boards. They're, uh, their main, all they're doing is giving me these reference points um, so that if my dog runs into the string or something like that or tears the string off, it's not the end of the world if the nail gets ripped out um, because I have my zero marks for foundation wall, and this is the height of the floor as long as these batter boards don't get jostled. Um, my next step is to, um, I believe I have, uh, on my plan, I have 14 inches from the top of the floor, uh, you know, so there's slab, and then there's insulation, and then there's gravel, um, I believe all that adds up to 14 inches, uh, I could be wrong, um, so that means that I need to scrape off the topsoil here, obviously, I need to scrape it off anyway, because topsoil doesn't do well as uh, structural support. So I'm going to scrape off mm, the first two inches of topsoil and then make sure that this is at least 14 inches down. Um, so I've got room for all the stuff that needs to come on top of the dirt uh, before the top of the slab is here. Um, so I will use, uh, I'll show you what I'll use for that, for the scraping. Um, and then when that, once that's all scraped, um, I believe my next move is to rent an excavator, a little mini excavator, get it out here. My wife is checking out the cost of doing that and um, digging out the, uh, the space for the footer. So that'll be eight inches to either side of uh, each of these strings. Um, plus, let's see, you know, it's, they're two by, so it'd be 11 inches total width minimum. Um, and uh, from there, I mean, I'll probably have to make some room in the trench to, to, to work as well. Um, once we've got the trenches dug, i got to put the uh, footers in. Not the footers, the footer forms. Uh, you can see I've got this wood. I have a friend who uh, hooked me up with a lot, of, uh, a lot of spare wood. I have access to a lot of that. It's going to be great. Um, so I'll make my forms out of this same material, which is, uh, I think just the right height for me, actually. I might use a little bit more concrete than totally needed, but totally fine. I'd rather spend a little more on concrete than screw something up. Um, uh, so I'll get the forms in, and then I have to get the uh, rebar in, which I've not dealt with before. And then, uh, then I get to call the county, have them come in and inspect my stuff, and then I'm pouring footers. And then there will be concrete 
construction. There will be evidence of a home being built um, instead of just temporary stuff here. So I'm excited for that. Um, uh, next video, I'll probably just do a me clearing this, uh, scraping off the topsoil and measuring stuff. Maybe I'll have the GoPro ready for that.